Amen. There has been quite a number of misunderstanding and misconceptions built around and about the name of Jesus. And the failure to recognize the name of Jesus has proven to be unhelpful for man, especially those who believe, in fact. We need to understand that the good in the name of Jesus can and will only be enjoyed by reason of that application or use of the name which is founded upon insight that is wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of the name as is shown in the scriptures. I'm going to explain that, what I just read. Now, when it comes to enjoying, I like, I like how Pastor Michael could say we enjoy the Holy Ghost, you know. When it comes to taking the benefits that are in the name of Jesus Christ, wisdom and revelation are important. Without insight, without recognizing what the name of Jesus Christ is, you cannot reap the benefits or partake of the blessings that are in the name of Jesus. Are we together? You need to understand. Let's use a popular um, adage that you've heard over and over again. Where the purpose of a team is not known, abuse is inevitable. I'll put it this way that when you don't know the, 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 the idea or the scope or the thoughts, the explanation, the logos behind the name of Jesus Christ, you will not be able to see the results. Have you ever wondered why it seems like you pray, you pray? In fact, so many times you shout, Jesus, you know, you scream it out loud. But yet you don't seem to see results. Amen. Hallelujah. So when it comes to maximizing, you or must end. first of all understand the name of Jesus. Are we together? Amen. Um, Pastor Richard said on Thursday that a name gives you your identity. He says, he said rather that a name gives you your identity. You know, when he read from um, the Old Testament scriptures, what we call the Old Testament scriptures, particularly from Genesis, you know, one of the things I took note of, especially when we read um, the prophecy of Isaiah, was the fact that I wrote it down this way. I said, a name also is given as a pointer to things to come. As a pointer of things to come. A name is given as a pointer of things to come. Which are, or which is indicated by the name. For instance, when Jesus Christ was called Jesus, when the name was given to the mother Mary, the angel Gabriel gave an explanation for why the name was given. Indicating that he wasn't just naming the baby or just giving a name for the sake of giving a name. He was giving a name uh, to symbolize what was to happen. It was a prophecy of some sort. Are we together? It was a name that predicated the things to come. Even as prophecies had gone a full time concerning Jesus Christ. Even so, the name Jesus wasn't just a name per se. It was an indicator of what was to happen. Are we together? You know, I, I remember I was talking with my brother's wife one time and then I said, you know, names are not, you know, it's in Africa that we are so particular about names. Very funny. <laughs> oh my God. It's in Africa that we are so particular about names. Maybe indeed there's something cool about calling, giving people good names. But you know the funny thing about life? How many of us have seen a John that they caught because he went to go and steal something? So why was he not preparing the way of the Lord? <laughs> or the chine, chi, chi, you know, the God in the name. The chine do that stole money for wire. <laughs> they told him to go and buy 1.5 mm, bar. <laughs> by 10 years, he bought nine and a half or nine. That's Chinedu. His name is Chinedu. Have you not seen Abu Bakr <laughs> that has saved certain Christians even when they were killing people? <laughs> the implication of that is that it is not what a person is called. <laughs> you hear, uh, what's Bezos? Let me say, like Pastor would say, what's Bezos? Or what's Bush? What's Stone? was George Bush, but yet he became president. And they knew that they even called Emmanuel. 
God with us. Now you be the leader of courts. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what am I trying to say? That we place, I, I believe that our understanding of what a name, um, the importance of a name has been misconstrued. We have come to not understand what the idea is behind the name. We have come to abuse it. Amen. Hallelujah. So, all right, let me just get back into my notes. Oh. As Paul said in Galatians 5 verse 4, I'm going to read that out. Christ is become, not what he calls Jesus Christ. He says Christ, he calls the name of the Lord. He says Christ is become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law. Ye are fallen from grace. The import of that statement is that there is a belief system, a manner and method of understanding and persuasion within the mind of man that would rob him of experiencing the blessedness of Christ. There is grace, there is favor, there is kindness, there is goodness. There are so many blessings in Christ Jesus, but it is possible for a man to be robbed of those benefits. Are we together? You know, there's this popular song, I think it was a song by um, Pastor Imane Irene and um, a certain Pastor Odunayo, Odunayo yeah? And then uh, one, one of the things they said in the song was that there's healing in the way, you know. <laughs> or, or this other song that says, um, in your name, all sickness must bow, demons tremble at the sound of your name. You know, or let's talk about Mark 16, 15, right? That talks about, uh, and verse, and down to verse 19, that says, uh, 16 rather, that says, in my name, they shall cast out. They shall take up serpents. They shall drink poisons and it will not hurt them. But yet we see people, believers in Christ, who are not experiencing that blessedness. Are we together? And there are those who are outside of the faith who are not experiencing the blessedness, which is the forgiveness of sin or the gift of the Spirit, even though the name is there for the taking. Are we together? There are blessings. Let's look at, I believe, uh, Pastor um, Henry read that um, the Sunday when he began this series. Look at Ephesians 1 and verse 3. I want you to see something. That all that God would give to us all that God, in fact, rather, has given. All that God has blessed us with, he has blessed us in Christ. In the name. In the name. All the blessings are in the name. Ephesians 1 verse 3. He says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath what? What's the tense there? Is it going to bless you or has blessed you? Who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly, where? In Christ. The heavenly is in Christ. The blessings are in the heavenly. So, by implication, the blessings with which God has blessed us are found where? In Christ. There's something I wrote out while I was beginning my study. It was going to be my introduction. Perhaps I'll read this and then say a little bit of something and then we postpone the teaching to some other time. The Gospels and the Book of Acts do not give us thorough information concerning the name of Jesus. What we will find in the Gospels and Acts are accounts of the name of Jesus. For instance, Acts 3. You hear the account of Peter and John at the gate called Beautiful, where they said, in the name, there are some things to take note of. Said, um, silver and gold we have not, but such as I have. Take note where he was coming from. He was coming from a place of possession. Not necessarily as we have seen it to be merely a declaration that is hinged on the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, there's a way that I need to com uh, communicate that idea to you such that you don't lose what I'm trying to say. 
For instance, when we read Acts 3, that record there, what comes to mind is that Peter just said, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. We think that the whole idea, the entire walking that was going on at that point within Peter was him just simply declaring, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. No. It began with a recognition, such as I have. Where was that which he had? In the name. That possession of his was in Christ Jesus. The statement in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth is not a charm. It's not a good luck spell. And that's why people can shout, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And yet, the oppression is still going on. It is still going on. Peter came from a place of understanding. He recognized he came from a place of insight. He came from a place of wisdom. He came from a place of revelation. He knew what the name was about. And from that understanding, he said, such as I have. That which he had, Paul described in the epistles as a blessing we are in Christ. So you will find a lot of times in the gospels, in the name of Jesus, in the name of, or in my name, 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 in my name. In the Acts, you will find in the name of Jesus Christ or in the name of Jesus or in the name of the Lord. Now, in the book of Moses, that is the law and the prophets, the writings within those books are testimonies which are in themselves prophecies of things to come concerning the man named Jesus Christ. You will not explicitly see the name Jesus written in the Old Testament books in quotes you get that when you read the writings of moses when you read the writings of Isaiah, the prophets you will not find in the name of jesus there but do you know the name of jesus was prophesied all over we we saw an example Isaiah 9 right a child will be born a son will be given his name shall be called he but there was no jesus there so <laughs> why not me just wake up one morning and then say in the name of emmanuel in the name of the great God or the mighty God. Or why not wake up one day and say, in the name of the wonderful counselor? It is because the idea is not about J E S U S. As some have read the Gospels and have misunderstood it to be. Are we together? It's like a charm. Uh, I have never used the charm anyway, but <laughs> from what we've seen in movies, you know, someone gives you something and then your faith is hinged on that thing. You know, and, you, and, and people go about. Um, doing whatever they want to do, hinged on that stuff that has been given to them. You know, the name of Jesus, when I say the name of Jesus, be careful to understand, like in this case now, in this context, I'm not talking about the name Jesus. <laughs> English has trouble. <laughs> I'm not talking about the idea behind the name. I'm not talking about the explanation behind the name. I'm not talking about the wisdom behind the name. I'm not talking about the revelation behind the name. Now, in this context, I'm talking about the name J-E-S-U-S. J-E-S-U-S, what do you call it? It's not a charm. It is not a handkerchief given to you by one bishop. <laughs> I was say, you go to go and buy and you hit the so that the price can go down. No, 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 no. The power is not in saying J-E-S-U-S. The wisdom, the blessings, the, the goodness, is not in saying J E S U S, and then we were shouting Jesus. You know, it's so funny how we don't even make squabbles out of nothing. So how can you cut a cake, call it spelling Jesus? Don't you have reference for the name? <laughs> but the real question is, do you know what the name is? The question is not about how you why are you using it to, to cut cake. You have, in fact, if you use J E S U S to cut cake, you have not used the name of Jesus to cut cake. <laughs> you are so far from it, very far from it. Are we together? So you will discover in the Gospels that they did not give an in-depth explanation. You get? In fact, just like Jesus Christ said, he said, I have many things to say to you, but I cannot say them to you right now. But when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. Hallelujah. And that revelation which the spirit of truth communicated is what we have documented as the epistles. Are we together? The truth or the reality that the spirit of truth has brought is that documented in the epistles. Are we together? So you might go through the, the law and the prophets. You might go through the gospels and you might not reach 
precise or accurate knowledge of the name of Jesus until you get into the epistles. Now, look at this. It is in the epistles that we find a thorough explanation or better still, insight into the name of Jesus Christ. In the epistles, the reality of the name of Jesus is revealed. No one that, you know how many times Paul uses the term in Christ, in whom, in him. He does not use the verbiage of Jesus or the verbiage of the laws and the prophets anymore. The laws and the prophets will say, Emmanuel, wonderful counselor, and all of that. But the people did not, they could not see. For instance, when you read Emmanuel, what comes to mind? You know, we are in the New Testament anyway, so you should have a better understanding than the people to whom Isaiah spoke to. But when Isaiah said, a virgin shall be with a child, and his name shall be called this and that and all of that, yeah, they did not have insights. Those things were covered. Revelation had not come. Wisdom and knowledge had not come. Understanding had not come. All they knew was, a child is going to come. But do you know that they were all foretelling something to happen? They had all given words to come. So in searching the law and the prophets, if you remain here, you might not reach the knowledge that God wants you to have concerning the name of his son, Jesus Christ. Are we together? You will discover, like I already have mentioned, the verbiage changes. Paul no longer, you will scarcely even find Paul saying in the name, I think he used that in one of the uh, 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 chapters in uh, his letters to the Corinthian church. He said, when you come together in the name of the Lord, Two times, I just remembered now. Another time he said, you, but you are washed, but you are sanctified. I, I like this part very well because it will shake your head a bit and get you into thinking. He says, by the spirit of our God in, and in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It means that our sanctification, our regeneration, our salvation was done in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So how did it happen? Do you think the way God sanctified you or washed you was to proclaim in the name of Jesus, sanctified? Do you see? Do you see the difference? Is it getting your head into thinking? That it is not about saying in the name of Jesus. It is not about that. Amen. Let's round this up. All right. Are you with me? Have I lost you? All right. <laughs> Amen. Okay, I'm going to end with this and then we we'll continue some other time. The lowly state of setting, of setting amongst the body of Christ is characterized by a defeated, downtrodden. <laughs> when I was writing this, I was like, wonderful. The lowly state of setting amongst the body of Christ, which is uh, the lowly state, yeah, of setting amongst the body of Christ, is characterized by a defeated, downtrodden, messed up, sicknessful, power lacking kind of life all of that is a product of a lack of growth in the knowledge of jesus christ who is the world who is the world now the reason why we have some of the issues we have in our times even amongst believers you know there is obviously that separation between the believer and the unbeliever you get for instance, we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Okay? There is a clear demarcation. We are partakers of the spirit of God. Amen. But yet, you can look at certain Christians and still find things that are synonymous to what is going on to people who are still in darkness. Why? The question is not that they have not been, or the issue is not that they have not been saying, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. They have not, it's not that they have not been shouting Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It is rather that they have failed to lay hold of an understanding or on the understanding of the name of Jesus. For instance, with the short thing I've just said so far, you must have come to know that there is clearly a difference between using the name of Jesus and mentioning the name of Jesus. Jesus is not in quotes, J-E-S-U-S. -S. There were other, you know, do you know what's so beautiful about the Gospels? They were so careful to say Jesus Christ of 
Nazareth, implying that they were other people, but they needed you to not mistake it. They were only giving you an account. Hey, let me jump faster than I ought to. What they accounted in all the Gospels was the name of Jesus. So that by the time you read through the Gospels, you will reach an understanding which is the name of Jesus. Are we together? If you comb through the Gospels, comb through the book of Acts, you will come to, your summary will be the name Jesus Christ. Are we together? That is where you will come to. That will be the summary. You know, uh, the summary encapsulates the entire idea that has been spread abroad in many words. You get? Or that has been shared in many words. When you look at the summary, you just know that, oh, this is all this has been all about. All this why. Are we together? Okay. I know this has got us a little itching to want to know more. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more time. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me read this and then we stop. Although the man in Christ has been elevated in Christ Jesus, far above principalities and powers, yet <clears throat> his life may show a contrary view to that written concerning him. If that man is not walking in the light of the revelation of Christ Jesus. I want you to take note of something that when Paul, the revelation of Paul is actually a revelation of the name of Jesus Christ. Because all that he goes about talking about is our realities, what we call new creation realities. They, they are actually an exposition on the name of Jesus Christ. Every fact of the new creation reality is an exposition of the name of Jesus Christ. Such that when, uh, when Christ says, when Paul rather would say, in him we have forgiveness of sins, what he's saying is that in the name of Jesus, you have forgiveness of sins. He's not using it as a prayer. Are we together? He's not praying for you that you have forgiveness of sins. Notice what uh, Peter said again at Acts 3. He said, such as I have, give I thee. It was something he already had in the name of Jesus Christ. And he was supplying it. All of Paul's testimony, all of Paul's writings, they were an exposition of the name of Jesus Christ. Such that as we read, you know, like he says in Ephesians 3, as we read, or even as we are taught, we are coming to an understanding of the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Such that the name Jesus is not what? J-E-S-U-S. The name Jesus, as God would have us know it or understand it, is not simply saying, in Jesus' name. Are we together? The name Jesus conveys a reality. Are we together? It conveys a reality. It, it, it brings to the mind possibilities that are outside the natural world. You see, it's funny. You know, when we were baptized into Christ, not that. We were actually baptized in the name. In the name. Salvation was baptism into the name. Are we together? We were received into the name. In the name. Hallelujah. You know, I'm going to end with something uh, Pastor Bayode Oyekan said. I was going to read that earlier, but my phone is down. Uh, the, the cross of it all was that it is possible for you to pray saying in the name of Jesus and you have not used the name of Jesus. And it is possible for you to pray without saying in the name of Jesus, yet you have used the name of Jesus. Are we together? But we're going to understand that better as the word um, comes much more to us. Hallelujah. I want you to lift up your voice and bless God because you have understanding, you have insights. Thank him because he has given you the name that is above all names. <laughs> your mind might not be able to comprehend all of it right now, but blessing for it. It is without denial that you yet have it. 
even though you might not clearly see it as it really is, but yet it is your possession in, in Christ. Bless God for the authority, for the power that is yours in Christ Jesus. Mondo Frede la baka su fredeja. Lenge de bado shi la pranda mondo ko frede de baka uso su fredeja. El lika pato u frede le mando ko uso su fredeja. Thank you because you have light by reason of the word of God that has come to you this morning. El leko pali brado uso su frede de baka uso shi pranda mondo fredeja. You have that which is greater than that which is in the world. El lambro do uso su frede le baka uso fredeja. We bless your name, Lord Jesus. We magnify you, our Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah.